I'm assuming that these then are not reserved, the ones without the... Uh, uh, no, these are all, I think they're all reserved, I don't I'm not sure. Is this among the reserved seats? Yeah, these three are. Okay. Just want to see if I can get a good angle. Yeah, maybe I should say that. Yeah.
uh, we're gonna get started in a little bit, but there's some older folks that don't have chairs. Are there any people with younger legs that are willing to give up some chairs? That's how we do it here. We only have 90 chairs at Howell, so. Anyone who needs a seat, please come over to here. Thank you. Okay, thanks everybody. We're gonna get started in a little bit, so get a glass of wine, use the restroom, and have a seat. Thanks, Jesse. Jesse Montgomery, everybody.
Hello everyone, welcome. Hi. Thank you so much for coming. Welcome to that lobby. We're here for Toyo's memorial. We're here to celebrate Toyo, how he contributed so wonderfully to all of our lives, and we're here to say goodbye. Hello everybody. This is Ori, Ori Karen, Toby. Um, so we have a little program, it's about 45 minutes long. Um, maybe two hours actually. There's a few extra people. Um, at the end, we're going to maybe have people talk if, if you're not on the list. But, uh, but you, know, you can talk to us on the side. In any case, I think we're going to get started with Carrie is going to speak. Am I correct? I'm going to let my brother introduce Carrie. Um, I, I would love to say there's so many great people here. Um, we have some people who uh, prepared a special goodbye for Toyo. We're so honored um, for everyone's contribution. And to begin the night, Carrie Abrams is going to say a few words. And he's a longtime family friend and a supporter of um, Toyo and me and everybody. And uh, we're so happy to have him. Um, but before Kerry comes up, I want to say one thing, which is thank you so much to Howell Happening. Um, um, Howell represents such a beautiful mission to um, preserve and represent uh, the incredible artistic tradition of the Lower East Side. Um, and they really took such good care of Toyo, and they honored his work and the work of his group. Um, and, you know, I, I have to say before we get started, thank you so much to the incredible Ted Reader. <laughs> and, and more than anything, the one person who really embraced us, thank you so much to Jane Friedman. Secondary to this end of uh, First Street. And though 
I guess there's not, you know, looking around, uh, Howell Gallery and the Mars Bar are very, very different places, but yet they both sort of encapsulate the spirit of the Lower East Side. They're both very, very family places as you look around everyone here tonight. And I just want to say in closing, before I read a little poem, that Toyo told um, Ori that this last year of his life, his show that he had at Howell, the book that Ted produced, that this was the best year of his life. Mm -hmm. And I think that, I mean, if I can consider that, if, if basically, if we can go out thinking that, that our final year is the best year of our life, I don't think we can ask for much more. <laughs> um, as the spirit is alive. Yeah. All right. <laughs> in, in terms of that, I basically, as Ori said, I think we owe Jane a big vote of thanks for providing her uh, a really, really very humble person. When he had his opening here, people were walking around. They said, is the artist here? <laughs> and nobody knew if he was even here. Uh, beyond that, Ted worked incredibly hard to produce a beautiful book. I know Toyota was very, very proud of that. And I think there's still some copies if you want to buy it after. Uh, in closing, I'll read a little poem I wrote about Toyo. Uh, As Thucydides, you cast your eye across the urban landscape of your newfound Lower East Side home. Distant land of your imagining, you sowed its fertile possibility. Chronicler of a time now long gone, buried deep beneath the ever-rising edifices built upon the ancient Taman earth, bulldozed into obscurity, your images unlock the doors of memory. Your record of a history being revealed over 99 nights, moments frozen through time, captured in the instant of your shutter speed, silver halide crystals, summoning the spirits of an angels dancing across bar top, saxmen wailing sacred chords, fire eaters, sword swallowers, strippers who bare their hearts and minds, spirits naked, raw, rejoicing, ecstatic madmen who dance through the night seeking refuge from sanity, summoning the holy. Your eight by 10 black and white prints hung above the bar revealing all. In a no-say-no world, you told everything as you raised the quotidian to the eternal realm. Rivington Street relics of another time rise up monumental, reborn anew in your images, elevating the cast-off scrap heaps, heaps of urban detritus to monumental grandeur, like shrines to some god who once reigned over a forgotten land, their brutal elegance revealed in your eye. Clandestine instigator creating opportunity as you filled the Mars bar with your boundless imagination. Unseen director of the show we all sought to be part of. The crowds arrived to witness what you beheld. Toyo, your gentle spirit soars over Tonkin Square Park. Some rare bird traveling from afar. Your wings spread wide as the red-tailed hawk drifting gracefully through the afternoon clouds its ancient trees, your all-seeing eye taking in all. Toyo, your generous heart gave us more than we might have ever sought. Thank you. Woo! Next, next up is Toby Dole is going to be reading a piece that David Dole wrote, but unfortunately he had an accident and was unable to really attend tonight. So. Hey everybody. Um, yeah, I'm really happy to be here and uh, see everybody. Um, I haven't seen Toy in a really long time since I was a little kid, but um, I just remember he's always, you know, really positive, really fun-loving, and you know, just a great guy. He and I, Toby, would come up to our farmhouse and yeah he just he loved all the animals and he seemed like he was always having a really great time so yeah my dad wrote some words so everything 
I love Toyo, and I'm sorry not to be here to read this to you. He was a sweet and mysterious soul, the likes of which we will never see again. Two cops are watching Thursday night's Exhibit X. A poetess wearing little more than a metaphor is crooning her hierophonic jingles to an outer galaxy guide as she is pulled back and forth on a baby powdered bar. That's when I first met Toyo, but I don't remember seeing him. That was the odd thing about Toyo, his spectral invisibility. In his artist statement for his Chelsea show in 2004, Toyo wrote, My motivation for this series comes from my growing nostalgia and sympathy for human life's frailty and to the dangers of existence. I've been living in New York City already for over 20 years. I wanted to examine my relationship with all the people around me. For that purpose, I've been taking photos of them in everyday circumstances. Most photographers strive for a signature style so that when you see their photos, you say, Oh, that's a... They take photos as a form of autobiography, but Toyo saw himself as part of the tribe, a tribe where lost and questing souls gathered in the name of an unknown god of peculiar artistic endeavors. His was an all-embracing collective soul. Photography for Toyo was a branch of Zen, an archaeology of the future, a blueprint for a society of outsiders, so that when extraterrestrial spaceship lands again, they can just look at Toyo's photographs and say, hey dude, this must be our ride and take off into the ozone blue of Ectochrome X. In the summer of 1983, a portentous quart of gray strangeness and charm landed on a remote region of the Lower East Side. It was called No Say No. It was as if Planet Debbie had fallen to Earth. Attempting to experience all life at Health Court nightly in an abandoned cocaine social club, after 99 nights of moon drunk madness, it almost seemed like all life had appeared there at least once. Enter Mr. F. Stop Boogie, Toyo. His idiogrammatic presence wavers over the earth, surfing epics and snapping synapses with freeze frame spirit reflexes, split infinities that quiver while the gnat's wings flicker in the mind. And only someone who knows how to loiter gracefully in the fourth dimension can distill them. No say no, a rogue planet that had fallen to earth. And since I met Toyo the very night the Phantasmagoric Club opened, I assumed, as many others did, that he was an alien. But I've been to his house a number of times. Admittedly, there's a giant rabbit, miniature dogs, and a phone without digits. But he does an impressive job of appearing human. Still, someone who spoke English so poorly had to be communicating on other channels. His, his son Toby, with an E, and my son Toby, with a Y, were friends as children and still are in their cool fry way. Through the thousand and one nights of No Say No that followed, his presence wavered over brain surfing epics, Acts of dubious morality and creations of self-endowed genius, snapping everything with freeze-frame intuition, slipping in between slip infinities, <clears throat> slipping between split infinities in that shiver between syllables. He caught that moment when everything trembles in the mind and exhausts itself in the one twentieth of a second snap of a gunmetal eye. Beneath the surface, ghosts of silver and nitrate stir. A lost world looms up, fantastic, sweaty, unstable, and comic. Fixed through that proleptic slight of vision that only someone who knows how to lawyer gracefully in the fourth dimension could distill. So yeah, there's a couple repeats in there, but I um, hope everyone enjoyed that. Um, happy to be here.
teach Shami right now. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. I'm going to teach Shami right now. Oh, okay. Big Shami. Shami, you have time? Yeah. Um, that's it. Aris, Soleil, Ori. Uh, you tell me, let's see, let's see. Okay, I have to get more. This is not enough. <laughs> very nice fish. Oh, very nice. Where, where you get your fish? Where I can buy fish? This is not enough. You must buy it. Where? How much? Um, you know, is it going to China? No, I'm not Chinese. No, 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 no. Fish. How much fish? I don't give to you. Must know where you got it. Um, the grams. Yeah. Yeah. Thousand request. This is. Over there, two bars down, one bar to the right. Okay? Very cool. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you. All right. Okay. All right, take care. Okay. Well, okay, so I'll go. Um, I'll meet you in one hour. Right. Meet you there. Okay, I'll see you soon. Okay. All right. See you there. When 
when he did his show here, I got to write something for the catalog. And that's also, like this, it's a nice opportunity to kind of think about him and, and his life's work. And it's, you know, it's kind of all over the place in some ways, but, but the thing was, whether it was the spectacular or the kind of the spectacular and ordinary, um, he brought to it all a, a level of humanism, of compassion, of generosity, of, of all this kind of understanding that he brought to everything, wide-eyed and, and open-minded. And uh, I, I'll uh, always miss Ori, but forever I'll be thankful for having seen the city and his many different types of people uh, through his eyes. Thank you so much, Carlo. So, um, next I'd like to introduce one of Toyo's oldest friends. Um, one of his first collaborators, um, a you know true to form Lower East Side artist and Lower East Side personality, and the founder of No Say No, and one of the founding members of Rivington School, Ray Kelly. Another one of Toyo's first collaborators, a real Lower East Side artist, um, uh, two of them actually, um, and I, I believe that there was a, uh, a mention of um, one of them in David Dalton's piece. Um, but they, you know, they were uh, by Toyo's side through the years and um, always supported him. Um, and did some remarkable art actions um, uh, through the 80s and even in the MoMA a few years back. Um, so I'd like to introduce Ishvan Kantor, Monty Kansen, and Angel Idealism. Just uh, do some reading to school. Yeah, yeah. Toyo 
Toyo spirit is alive and we want to keep him alive and uh, continue his work and the living Toskula as well alive. And the, uh, Toyo spent, sacrificed his life for the reading Toskula school basically. That's what he did. He was the greatest part of the reading Toskula school, the propagandist of the reading Toskula school. He kept the archive. He, uh, he did everything day and night for this group of the Lower East Side. So, thanks for everybody uh, who uh, accompanied Toyo in this mission, which he accomplished amazingly. Art is nothing, art is dead. Art is living, art is dead. Art is dead. Six o'clock. 
o'clock, like he was representing six o'clock. And now I would like you to learn the six o'clock sign through your own experience. So, when you beat people in the Lord East side, you use the six o'clock sign. Now, that's how it goes. You put up, it's a two-handed arm of the six o'clock, so you put your hands together and you put your toes together. Okay? So that's the six o'clock sign. So I want you to get up and do the six o'clock sign and then together, say, it's always six o'clock, three times, okay? Let's do it. Get up. Please. Get up, stand up. Come on. That's for Toyo. Forget the Toyo. That's for Toyo. It's six always six o'clock. Okay, three times. It's One, all... two, three. It's always six o'clock. It's always six o'clock. It's always six o'clock. Yes. It is now 7.30, and everything is 
friend, Toro. Oh. not much in return. So I really appreciate you doing the send out for my old friend, Rivington School, yo. <laughs> He put together a, uh, a video piece um, which included um, a series he did called The Courts, um, where he photographed the same basketball court um, over two years, and it's this kind of beautiful um, poetic arc uh, which captures the changing of the seasons and the changing of the neighborhood. And um, well, we're going to play the video piece um, accompanied by um, a, uh, a composition and a partial improvisation um, by Jesse Montgomery. Before we start the film, um, I don't think uh, there might not be another opportunity to speak, so I'm just quickly going to say uh, I just want to. My experience with Toyo was, was sort of like the, the other father, one of the many fathers in the neighborhood. <laughs> Uh, you know, on occasion would fall into rotation to take us to um, a music lesson at Third Street Music School. So, um, grateful um, for those moments and for him spending time with one of my best friends uh, ever, Ori, and helping to make him happen, and Toby, um, and the whole family. So, uh, honored to be here and to play. So, um, I think in the spirit of Toyo, this is a pure um, improvisation. Um, on on the film. My first time seeing it too.
a special thanks to a young artist who helped toy with a few different projects, who helped him put the uh, video piece together uh, for the show with uh, very little time and showed a lot of commitment to do so. Uh, Jordan Kleiman, who's here in the audience. <laughs> Our next speaker is uh, another one of Toyo's oldest friends and a uh, Rivington School artist. Um, I'd like to invite Michael Carter to the stage. Yeah. Don't let him speak, he's not drunk enough. Squid! Mike Parker! Vindaloo! Vindaloo! Mr. Vindaloo! Before I was Bindaloo, or actually a little bit, yes, I became Bindaloo. And that, that was the first uh, show that Toyo uh, shot of me at No Say No, back in 1983. And I'm not sure if I knew Toyo too well before then, I might have met him at A's or, you know, through Ken or somebody. But, um, you know, he, he was such a vital part. Obviously, of everything that went on there, and I was flattered to have him take my picture taken. And and the weird thing about Toyo was like, you know, every I don't think there were any exceptions, but everybody that performed it, no say no, especially in the 1999s and even after, it didn't matter. You know, if, if Toyo took your picture, he was going to print out at his own expense an 8x10 beautiful picture and give it to you. And that was just part of his largesse because Toyo, as we've heard today, you know, he was a very selfless person and he, um, he just wanted in his own way to support his, the artists around him in whatever way he could. And he was also obviously an artist himself, not just a photographic artist, but as we all know now, in terms of what he did with installations, and in terms of what he did with photography. I mean, anything Toyo put his mind to could be art. And he was very assiduous. He would, I mean, you can see from that last video, he was like, you know, all right, every day I'm going to take a picture of this <laughs> thing. Blah, 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 blah. You know, eventually it could be a movie. You know, eventually it could be a book, like the Rivington Street book, which, I collaborated with Toyo and Monty, and you know, I mean, Toyo's got over a thousand pictures in that book. Many of the people in this audience right now, and uh, you know, what, what what else can I really say? I'm going to read a poem about Toyo when I get off the stage. This I kind of. This is a, 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 a kind of, this is a poem in progress, but it's kind of a different version of what I read um, you know, we, we did this kind of impromptu memorial for Toyo on Forsyth and Rivington Street, and I read a different version of that. You know, Angela was there, Monty was there, I think Jim C was there. You other people. Jim C, couldn't, Jim C couldn't make it tonight. He, he, he got held up in traffic. You know. ah. Anyway, <clears throat> this poem is called, and with apologies to Bill K. Dick, it's called The Transmigration of Toyo Sashia. Your gruff guffaw did not distract from that one white winter you lambasted a jungle gym with love and hard effort that street transformed to a semblance of anarchy. This universe already held bent on self-destruction. Always now, sometimes near six o'clock, these fires yet burn, blaze, if everything that was extinguished by the universe was possibly mere dark matter, or maybe just a corner on the block where the cosmic ray 
and the Higgins boson meld with neutrinos, quarkish Q-tips into total gizmosis, and never mind exploded in the ether, then the stars become your companions, incorrigibles, where six o'clock becomes forever, or at least until the next incarnation. Our next speaker is really one of Toyo's oldest friends, and I have to say has always honored Toyo and his work, and has been a great friend to uh, Toyo and our family. I would like to invite to the stage uh, Ken Haratsuka.
culture. And since you know, 57. Yeah. Yeah. Long time. And uh, he said how long. Anyway, from Pennsylvania. He got just a, a stroke and the, uh, he was recovering and he's not only recovering, he's taking care of his mother. Which is great. Say hello from him to everybody. Please accept. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, everything happened because of uh, the beautiful organization of uh, right now everybody probably know about Cowboy Ray. He kept it. Everything is strong. And the uh, socially, very widely open hearted, and which is not very, yeah, I have I hope this America right now is like that, you know. But also, you know what, this living down school happening is. The energy of Linus Coraggio, who had uh, this eccentric ideas, and uh, also, also, almost like a two different edge of the uh, creations. But Ray took care of this, taking care of this uh, whole community. Minus to carry this information. That living down school was a great place. And meanwhile, uh, anyway, uh, before that, no say no, 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 no. Toyo was every night taking pictures. Next day, he printed it out and put it up. He wanted to show what he can do, you know? And the uh, no say no was a place. Really, really <laughs> encouraging to the new uh, coming artists and the welcoming to the uh, new, uh, new, uh, new society. Okay. I think I will put it to it again. And it seems like uh, this how happenings is like gathering old and new people together right now. Congratulations. <laughs> Long story short, here comes, you know, I am from far, far away, I'm in Japan, and I had an idea of uh, my carving stones uh, as an earth size and the energy of what the earth has and what I can do as a one single human being. You know, there are many people come to, uh, you know, to look for Boring encounters and a new, uh, like a vision of the uh, exchange. You know, look at Monty Carson here. He, you know, everybody knows Monty Carson. You are Monty Carson. <laughs> <laughs> I am Monty Carson. She's Monty Carson. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, Toyo is Monty Carson. He encourages uh, people and he encourages all the uh, lawyers uh, what happened vividly and energetically, which is living on school, make it into one book. It's not so easy. But people dedicate for it. Because, you know what? Only reason why? That was good. That's the reason why. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Many reasons, but yeah, what is the right one? Right, thank you. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey. What is the right one? Hey. What do we do? Hey. No? Yeah. Where's your album? Come on, he's really Well, cool. my wife, uh, Gloria McLean here, she's going to dance. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Toyo. Compliment everything. Such a beautiful voice. We had this good time in your life. Thank you guys. Thank you.
she had the amazing earliest of uh, sculpt uh, sculpture works on uh, by the Reddington, what became the Reddington Garden, which um, the amazing um, uh, types on uh, the ladder. Um, yeah. uh, so uh, I'd like to introduce the next speaker, also um, a, a longtime friend of Toyo, one of the uh, people who performed at No Say No, and uh, he happened to uh, finish it out uh, doing Toyo's taxes for the past 20 years. Uh, I'd like to welcome to the stage, Howie. So um, I met Toyo at, no, at the 99 Nights, and um, it, pretty much everyone's already covered that. I just want to give you a little anecdote about talking about fly on the wall. I'm going to try to do a summation of some of the material we already said. For, um, you know, being on the side, yet being an artist himself. So I lived for about 21 years on Third Street, across from the motorcycle club. And it was pretty crazy in the late 70s. Toyo came over to my place probably around 83. And he wanted to take pictures of them. And I told him that everyone who had even come near them with a camera certainly lost the camera if they were lucky. And you see this, so you see what I'm talking about. And I just want to be implicit and quick. So somehow Toyo went over there. It was actually on July 4th. And those of you who've been around recall it was like that on July 4th. And he said, can I, you know, so saying, can I take your picture? And they looked at each other and they said, yeah, this guy's cool. Somehow, <laughs> something about him, he was in a certain way. And, and I, I was married to a Japanese woman 27 years that sort of brought Toy and I closer because she could translate. And she knew a lot about his family history, which to me, everybody came from, you know, what is today the Ukraine. And, um, <laughs> No, am I making anybody offended yet? So, so um, you know, he, I have this picture, I bartered with him, and um, I have this picture which is this incredible poster, it's probably like, I don't know, like three feet by two feet, of the angels blowing up their, you know, huge garbage can, resulting in shrapnel, all these beautiful lives. And at some point I was lame, I'm, like a quasi art collector. I'm not really anal enough to be an art collector. I've tried. So, what happened is that it started to, I put it up on thumbtacks and it started to yellow and curl. And he insisted that I destroy it and that he would bring me a new one. And so, I've kept it in the tube ever since. I'm afraid to even open it. I do have a lot of pictures of, of me performing, of the garden when it was right at its peak on uh, you know, Rivington and Forsyth. But he was a wonderful character. I always sort of empathized that he was very alienated and in all kinds of sense, in the Marxist Hegelian sense, in the public sense, even though he had so much support in the community. He was very much alone, even when he was with people. And there was a way in which he was a very traditional, tragic figure of the artist. And um, it was terribly ironic. You know, we just got together to do this movie. He was so excited, like a little child. I hadn't seen him in months. And you're always saying, someday, someday get to go to your 60s or your 70s, there is no Sunday. So get out and fucking do it. Because yeah. don't be saying, oh, I could have and I should have. But anyway, I loved him, and I got to know a lot of his family. I remember Alice when she was just a little girl talking Hebrew to me and no say no. And I remember the shows we did, State of the Street and all this stuff, and the times we'd take him to a fancy Japanese restaurant and watch him gobble. No. So anyway, so I love the guy and, you know, I have a lot of grief in my life and this is just another, you know, big, big straw on the fire, so God bless him, God bless all of you. speaker um, was one of those personalities welding and constructing and causing havoc and you know being a general pain in the ass um, a real Lower East Side artist and a, uh, um, a supporter of Toyo uh, through the years um, I'd like to invite to the stage Linus Karate yeah.
kept the bed by. Anyhow. So, uh, if there's anyone here who can't hear me, or anyone not here who can't hear me, shut the fuck up. Toyo would have wanted you to hear this. And the picture of Toyo standing behind me, sternly glaring at you like a high school teacher if um, you try to heckle me or get on yourself. So anyway. Uh, Toyo might do our So Toyo would say, now Rhinus wants to say something, so listen. <laughs> I'm not so well rested because I woke up at 5 a.m. this morning from a dream where Toyo was saying to me, if you want to. And I realized some thoughts and memories were coalescing around him. And I should take advantage of this memorial to give the community Toyo knew <clears throat> and loved a few snapshots into his life. And for me, at least, is somewhat mysterious personality. Uh, for many, you can't separate Toyo's name from No Say No or Worthington School. Because physically, he was centrally encamped in the heyday of both of those scenes. Having set up a micro apartment in the back of number 42 Rivington Street. A lot of people don't know he was actually living there for quite a while. Uh, the toilet was back there too, which was probably used by 50 people a week who might be hanging out, many who couldn't see or piss straight from copious partying. So I guess that may tell you the de facto janitor as well as the principal documentarian of those scenes. One, of, one time stands out for me in the 33 years I knew Toyo. I had been welding most of the afternoon on an overcast winter day in the Rivington School Sculpture Garden, and it started to rain, so I pulled the welder into the No Say No storefront, which was locked, but I was one of the five people who ever had keys to it. Toyo was off somewhere, and rather than cut out to Brooklyn where I was sharing a loft with Ken Hiratsuka at the time. I hunkered down in a chair listening to the rain, waiting for my fickle girlfriend to show up as planned. Well, after a long while, neither she nor any Rivington regulars came through the door, I guess because of the crappy weather. By now, I was feeling kind of sleepy, hungry, and horny, and not too psyched to walk over to the F train with no umbrella. Just then, Toyo pushed through the door, and we started chatting for a while, until he invited me into the back, where he had a sleeping cot, lots of books, mostly Japanese, a lot of art books, a chair, and a plug-in walk. <laughs> and, of course, a photo enlarger. We began looking at his recent 8x10 photos he had taken over the last month or two, and somehow printed in that cramped space. I didn't often get to see Toyo's work, really. He would occasionally nail a photo up in the front part of the storefront, but he was not shy about showing his work, but he was very sparing in how he revealed it. It was a great fun to see his shots, many of which had friends and me in, doing random crazy stuff outside in the Rivington School Sculpture Garden. <coughs> After a while of talking about the photos and laughing a bit, we both started to feel tired, and Toyo just started to unpack his Chinese groceries and plug in the walk. I wasn't sure if this was my cue to leave, if Toyo just wanted to be left alone after a hard day's work somewhere. But he seemed to be putting a lot of stuff into the walk, so I decided to hang out. <laughs> after the tofu sprouts, mushrooms, and fish flakes got bubbling, he handed me a bowl and we just 
a by the one bare light bulb sitting inches from each other, not talking. He could be a beautiful cat like that sometimes. Over the years, Toyo gave me some of those photos, which he would always choose. I was actually afraid to ask him for any particular one because he could get huffy. I didn't totally realize it at that walk dinner in 1986, but Toyo had a deep belief in those around him who were working creative, creatively at the time, and he had, I think, secretly adopted us. This trait was exemplified best by him setting up a travel grant in 1988, where he and four Rivington School artists, including myself, got to go around Japan doing art in different venues for a couple months. Um, I should mention he also somehow organized a travel grant for Fakyu to go to Korea um, <clears throat> at one point in the 90s. Uh, Toyo had a very stealth way of taking pictures. I was never really aware of him shooting me. Or if I was, I was never, I never knew when he was going to click the shutter button. This is so different from now when someone's stiff arm shoots out holding a stupid camera and people crunch together stiffly to get into frame while putting on their two second smile. Well, here's a performance piece for Teo. Fuck cell phones. It's okay, I got another one. Obama phone because I'm low income. Anyway. That was for Toyo. Toyo was a free-range photographer. He was so respectful of what he was capturing that he could never wreck the vibe or intrude on the flow of what was happening before him. He was the opposite of a dickhead, exploitative, paparazzi-type shutter bug like Bear Jones. Who, uh, also shot Rivington at certain points. Um, after the first Rivington School Sculpture Garden was bulldozed, Toyo moved to a loft on West Houston and had the Rivington School over for a party once around 1990. That was the first time I saw his large black and white drawings. I didn't even know he drew. I was able to keep bumping into Toyo over the decades by virtue of being a downtown person and going to openings and stuff. Toyo would infuriate me sometimes because he would never greet me the same way twice, which taught me not to take him for granted or try to figure him out. Either he was very somber or he would slap me on the back of I do think he was a bit socially awkward sometimes, and that made him even more quirky and unpredictable in public. But mainly I thought of him as an intimate, like, life observer with a child's open naivete and a young teenager's goofiness. I never knew his age. I thought he was around 62, not 79 a testament to his lively, youthful demeanor. <coughs> 69, even so. 69. <laughs> Toyo accomplished a lot in his final year or so. The 300-page book about Rivington School not only featured his photos, but benefited from his patient logistical contribution in the years previous to its launch debut at this here Hal Gallery in September 2016. Hal Gallery also hosted Toyo's fantastic one-man show of photos, drawings, and sculpture around the same time. So ultimately, Toyo was a sort of renaissance man, easily working in various mediums. His production and virtuosity was not diminished despite losing a finger in a factory accident in his 20s in Japan or being low income, or being a chain smoker. Around
around Thanksgiving last year, Toyo called me to say, Linus, can you come and do an interview about Remington School on Sunday? I said yes, but almost didn't go because it was raining that day. But I knew Toyo didn't just call you for some dumb banal reason. So I bicycled down from the Upper West Side to near Rivington, where that meeting was. Michael Carter, Ray Kelly, Howie Solo, Julius Klein, Rolando Vega, and Toyo were there with the film crew. And we got to rap for a few hours about the good old days as the rain came down. Afterwards, we all posed for pictures on Essex Street, getting wet. Tell you put his arm on my back at one point, and then we all scattered in various directions. That's the last time I saw him, which is okay with me. I'm cool with that, because although Toyo had the sharpness for years more of creativity, at the same time, he fit enough in in his lifetime that it could also be said that it was never a fine time to die. That's kind of a rare outcome for most people, but Toyota got to have it that way. Um, not religious, if not anti-religious, but I do think that Buddhism holds the clearest philosophy about death in that the Buddhist understand that there's a cathartic release of joy in the wake of someone's dying. So there's no need to feel just sad today if you don't want to. I believe Toya would prefer we feel joy in his wake. And I'm glad to have known him and quite proud to have been creative around and under his watchful eye. And just like to say I hope that his archive gets seen in the future and by the masses. Yes. Yes.
he tells me so many jobs when I, I needed the job that I could survive at the time. I'm very, very glad I have great friends. Yeah. Since then, uh, we, we always touch each other. And uh, last few years, we started the golf. Uh -huh. uh, but the pitch and part, they were queens, you know, but the classic. Uh, 40 yard, 50 yard distance. Uh, He's a very stable, stable uh, girlfriend. He's quite always stable. I'm not. He's good. But he made a lot of boring one. But I'm a three. It's a very short hole, it's a good hole, boring one. Uh, last time I, I met him that uh, Tuesday, we worked together. Then Thursday he passed away. That uh, so so shocked to me. Uh, he's a lovely lovely person. I I'm lucky to have such a nice friend in New York. Uh, thank you very much. Some words from Toyo's from Toyo's family. Got it, Ari. Right. Got it, baby. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, Toyo uh, embraced. Um, he made a lot of us his family. And uh, the first, probably, um, was my sister Alicia, and uh, who was a kid participating in some performances in No Sino. And uh, she has a very special perspective on Toyo, and um, I'd like to invite her to, to the stage. There will never be 
at 6 o'clock when I don't want one more, just one more moment with you. I will not partake and deprecate you even with good intentions. Fuck you, Toil R.I.P. So what do I wish for you, Toil? Damn, Toil, why do I have to write this, Toil? Why you walk so fast, Toil? Let's just wait a minute and have a coffee. Toil! May you forever appreciate and be appreciated in every form you take. And may you, above all else, never rest in peace. There are no words for how you are missed. Of, of Toyo is him with 
his son or drawing. And then, of course, then Toby came along, and it's like, talk about like laughing for <laughs> no apparent reasons. Like, Toby, you made Toyo laugh all the time. <laughs> you were the funniest baby <laughs> in a very good way. So I think that Toyo will be missed for all that he did, for all the caring that he did. Um, I think that um, he'll be missed for all of that. I think he'll be missed for um, I think he'll be missed for what he did, but more for who he was, this good man. He was a good man. He was a good friend. He cared without expecting or needing reciprocation. Toyo, I'm going to miss you because you were a good man and a good friend. Uh, I, I think we got to get Park, Parka. 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 Come on. Yeah. Parka. Come on. Parker. Peter Parker. Don't you know your name, Robert Parker? That's how Toyo said it all those years. Parker. Parker. Look, Linus, you used up Parker's time. I just want to tell you that. Um, and that's true. Um, so, be brief. Very brief. Okay. I met Tara before she did. Yeah, he came from, he's not, I think he came from the 30s. He so was living with some, another Japanese person. And uh, it might have been Arlene. I introduced her to me. Um, I knew what we were doing five minutes. But uh, I gave him a. He, uh, I, had, I was living at 622 East Devon Street, uh, which was there. I decided that the diggers had quarters in the day, and the place was vacant, the top uh, two floors. And I was, um, was available, for me, available for me to give. The parking's away until I got one. And uh, um, it was in, that was in the summertime in the early 80s, maybe 83 or 84, I'm not, I don't, I don't remember. This photograph was taken in 86. Um, with Russell Albrecht and that other guy over here, and uh, Monique. But um, that's the year that uh, Toby was born, he just told me. So uh, my story from the 80s early was uh, uh, Marie Lysak across the street had a storefront that was available to me right on the uh, set of what was it, uh, my earliest blacksmith shop in the city. And uh, Toyo would go in there. And uh, in the winter, he set up 45 gallon hour drums and developed photographs, uh, which is just uh, you know, remarkable because that day chemistry was um, temperature specific. Um, I think that's what they, uh, they really. Um, at least the photographs from the storefront where art and architecture came from developed in there. But uh, from that place in Memphis, Nancy. And uh, I was the rest of it. What I got to say. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Robert. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, so, uh, I'm, I'm going to present something quickly to say something uh, short. Um, but before I say anything, I'm going to do how I feel. Um, so, excuse me.
Cleo, thank you for being the only father that I ever had. Thank you for being an amazing grandfather to my son, Francis. Yeah. Thank you for teaching me how to ride a bike. <laughs> Thank you for teaching me how to cook Japanese food. Thank you for teaching me how to see art. Thank you for showing me how to be an artist. Thank you for showing me that art is an ethical path. Thank you for always taking time to make our family a family. Thank you for stopping me when I was out of control. Thank you for allowing me to participate in your art. Thank you for supporting every single time I ever showed a piece and giving me my first show when I was 17. Thank you for buying me the paint to paint Mars Bar for the first time. Thank you for being the only person that encouraged me to write graffiti and vandalize people's property. <laughs> Thank you for always giving me a special gift, a photograph of me doing some art or another every birthday and every Christmas since I was two. And I remember taking my first steps in the same room as Toyo. And thank you, Toyo. Arigato gozaimasu. I know all of you thought very little about the other Toyo, the family Toyo, and I, I always felt like I was in a huge battle with you guys. I really hated all of you. <laughs> but actually, I love you now. I don't know, I got it. Um, I was right now, I can't believe that. I love you. <laughs> it's crazy. Anyway, <sighs> so here's a boring speech. Um, Toyo and I basically had a mundane relationship. He helped me carry my laundry and hold the cat so I could pull out an embedded claw, eat cheap Chinese. This is all recent stuff, right? Bike rides, trips to the Japanese grocery, and then there are the cats, and the grandkids, and of course the kids. Actually, all these things are kind of exciting. <laughs> Toyo came into my life and into the lives of Alice and Ori, and then came Toby to make our family a unit. Um, Toby never called Toyo dad. He always called him Toyo because everyone else did. Um, when my sister moved in for her last two years with breast cancer, Toyo built a room for her daughter and uh, then became the person to Lexi. He was to Alice, Lori, and Toby in a Lexi kind of way. He spent lots of time coaching her to hang and swing between the bars in the park because she was strong like him. 20 years before, he taught Alice to ride a bike. And around the same age, Toyo made a gallery birthday party for Ori, where baby brother Toby and all the friends got their own large paper to create art on the walls of the short-lived Toby Art International Gallery in our <laughs> sixth-floor loft. Around Toyo, kids learned to love natto, because Toyo loved natto. That smelly, gooey, cheap, fermented soybeans that go with rice. He never taught Toby to ride a bike, but that was because Toby always had to teach himself how to do whatever his brother knew how to do. <laughs> so Lay was born, and then he began their special relationship, a closeness that was exceedingly sweet. Toya was so lovable. He had so many funny and fun times with Francis until just now. Then there were the cats and the guinea pigs. Goose Goose the guinea pig was a great love. Nanji, Ume, Yamoshi, Popo, Chio, the new Popo, and Lucy. Let me, oh, I can't read it to you. Thank God I always had cats and guinea pigs in my house, which meant Toyo was devoted to my furry family. <laughs> to him, they were beyond sweet and innocent. Toyo loved innocence. He had great compassion for all the innocents in the world and it was mutual.
He read Japanese myths to the kids and books about birds to Popo, pointing out the bird photos. And Lucy became his bedfellow recently. And now that we have Lucy at my house, I realize that there was no way he was sleeping much with Lucy in the room. And Lucy ate lots and lots of expensive kitten food. Probably Toyo spent as much on her as on himself. He was joyful when finding cheap sneakers at Kmart or a used t-shirt selling on the street. Toyo really appreciated artists and regular people. He was extremely happy to show his work lately, overjoyed, really. Thanks to Ori, Jane, Ted, and Howell, and some of you guys. It was really stressful getting there because he didn't believe it. It had been so hard. But once he did, he created a small crowd of friends at his house. I understand it wasn't easy. And Toyo always wanted to make a book. And finally, books happened of 99 Nights of Remington School. It was magical. And then there was the ultimate book he could create himself every day. And it turned out to be Facebook. Yeah. I think Toyo had a lot to say about art and creativity. His English was definitely way more apparent when the topic was art. <laughs> However, I saw that it was intensely personal to him and not everyone listened, saw, or heard, or could hear him. And so he didn't have really much to say. And it's not easy to hear what Toyo might be saying through his photos, because we don't see through his mind, nor have Toyo's drive combined with talent and appreciation of each other. It showed in his care and loyalty for his no-say-no -no friends like Fuck You. I believe the children in his life understood him because Toyo really shared himself with children in a beautiful way. Toyo couldn't stand lots of talking or drinking, so it was really doesn't make much sense that he was so identified with the Remington School. But I think it's about a kind of freedom, faithfulness, and authenticity combined with his natural opposition to materialism he was special. Who else would take a picture of you as a stranger and give you an original print the next day? And it didn't matter if you were an artist doing something cool. Anybody. And do that hundreds of times over. Toyo surprised me with his passions that popped up. His passion for Facebook. He surprised me with his huge drawings, which ran from poignant to monumental to a special kind of funny. He surprised me with his newfound passion for golf. And finally, with his hundreds of sky photos on his iPhone 5, taken last October, November, and December. No, no, October, September, October, and November, because he was not here in December. Toya worked intensively, almost ferociously, when he was working on something, but he didn't support the idea of working. He felt sorry for and distant from people who worked at a regular job.
So don't do that band. Okay, great, great. 